Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar, and I'm the senior pastor at Alpha Lions Dead Ministries in Derry, Pennsylvania. I'm just an old football player that has been saved by grace. I played several years with the New England Patriots and with the Detroit Lions. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you into one of our services. Hi, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to view our service today. I'm Pastor Ronald Kozar, Senior Pastor of Alpha Lions Den Ministries, and following you're going to see an information page. And I'll just simply be honest with you, we could not do what we do without your financial support. So we totally rely upon you, so I just want to take this opportunity to thank you in advance for all your gifts and donations. So please view our information page, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless. exact same people were mentioned in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Now, if we look this evening, in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, it says, for the message of the cross, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but unto us who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. Now we went back and we looked in Romans 1, 16, 17, and 18, and it says, For, the, um, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for the Jews first, and then also for the Gentiles. So Paul is writing this letter to the people at Corinth, and he is teaching them the foundational truths of the New Testament. So he's saying here that the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but unto us who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. Now we looked at this, probably the most, I would say one of the most powerful things on the earth today is to take a carnal person, to take an ungenerated man or woman and to have them born again to have them transformed to be a spiritual being. That's where that term being born again came from. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, Nicodemus was a religious ruler. And he asked him, how can one know? How can one enter into the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, a man must be born again. And Nicodemus said, 
well, how can I enter into my mother's womb and be born again to be born a second time? And Jesus said in, in the Nicodemus in John 3, about probably verse 5 there, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's carnal. That which is born of the flesh is merely flesh. But to those who are born of the spirit, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So that means just because you were born a carnal birth does not mean you are spiritual. As a matter of fact, it means you are carnal. This is why the term and people believe in what Jesus said that a man must be born again. Because as I always say, that which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. And a carnal mind, a carnal man cannot understand or comprehend the things of the kingdom. And what he's saying here in 1 Corinthians 1.18, he's saying it is actually foolishness to them. The cross is foolish to the people that are perishing. But unto us who have been saved, it's the power of God. Because we know what has transformed us. We know that what indwells in us, what lives in us. Listen, in our carnal mind, I'm a, I'll watch every single one of you. I watch myself. I watch my wife. I watch the people we know. I see every single person that goes through struggles. Every single person goes through trials and tribulations. But how do we overcome that? See, a carnal mind, the carnal person cannot overcome those things. It's only to those minds that have been born again and transformed. The Bible says that we're not to be conformed to the world, but we're to be transformed. How? By the renewing of our minds. So that we may prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God on this earth. That is our mission. To prove what is the acceptable and perfect will of God on this earth. Now what gets me is this. Is when Christians who have been saved say, well, I just don't know what the, what the will of the Lord is. I said, well, I don't know what the will of the Lord is. I get to find out what the will of the Lord is. I'm waiting what the will of the Lord is. Well, the Bible tells me that we're not to be conformed to the world, but we're to be transformed. We're a different breed of people. We're a different group of people. Why? So that we may prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God on this earth. So we don't even... We have to know it, and then we're the ones that have to prove it. How? It's by the way we live. It's that transformation of that person. People go, well, how can you do that, or how does she do this, or how do they do that? Listen, it's not in your carnal mind. It's not in your flesh. You can never be an overcomer in your flesh because the flesh and the spirit are enmity. They fight with one another. I say we're a trifold being. We're spiritual. We're all a spiritual being. We have a soul, which is our mind, emotions, and our will. And we live in a physical tent called our bodies. So now go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 1. Paul's writing this. He said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the, the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And then he goes on to say this in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 3. I was with you in weakness, fear, and in much trembling. Weakness, fear, and in much trembling. Now go back over to Acts chapter 18. I'm going to come right back to this verse, but I want you to look in Acts 18, verse, at the end of verse 8, it says this. 
And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and they were baptized. And then the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision and said, do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent for I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you for I have many people in this city. Now, as we read through this chapter, what happened to Sosthenes in verse 17, he was drug out before the judgment seat and he was beaten. We know that Paul later on was turned over to the Jews at Jerusalem. We know that these things happened right after this word. Now, what we've learned in our ministry is this. It's just like when we remember the Passover. And what I mean by that is when we partake of communion, what's known today as communion. But to us, it's when we partake of or remember what the Lord told us when he partook of that Passover meal. It says that he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which has been given for you. So what God does in the transformation of our lives, listen to this. He took Paul and he sent him on a mission. So he, he chooses you, he took the bread, then he blessed it, then he broke it, then he gave it. Now this is exactly what happens in our lives. God takes us, not just once, but through the whole process of our journey with Him. He'll take you into a position where you're persevering and you're pushing and you're trying to get something from God. And all of a sudden, you get something great. Well, that's the blessing. Then what you need to look out for is the breaking part. Because all the time when He takes you, He blesses you first. Then he breaks you. You'll always go through a breaking process. Now for those who have been found faithful through the breaking process, then God gave it. So he takes us, he blesses us, then he breaks us, then he gives us to ministry. Now it's only those who fulfill that entire process that are really certified by God to be in his ministry. It is a process that the ministers go through and not even them, but as it filters down into the body of Christ that each individual one of us go through that same process. He just don't throw you into the fire before he blesses you. Because you could never, you could never contain that. You could never endure through that. I heard a, a man preaching the other day I listened to, and I could just hear that apostolic teaching immediately. And as soon as I do, I'm attracted to it. That's what amazes me today about some of our teachings and preachings. And when I hear other men preach and teach similar things that we do, it's just like a cold drink of water to me. I could sit there and listen to them all day long. Because I know it's that Jesus speaking out of them. It's that apostleship speaking of Jesus through those men. And he said that God was telling him, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. And his wife was over there running around. Yippee! Yoo she was all happy. And he's sitting there just, he's thinking, oh no. And the whole church was just thinking, what's he talking about? I knew exactly what he was talking about. Because when God tells you not to fear or not to be afraid, you are going to be taken into a position. Two big parts of our outreach are represented here. First of all, on the left is our His Food Ministry truck. We send this truck out every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday to pick up food, and we do a free food giveaway at our church. Once again, that's every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And then on the right is our Alpha Lion's Den Ministry church bus where we pick up people and bring them to our church on Wednesday and Sunday. But get your Bibles ready. Get, 
Get your bubbles ready, everybody. challenge and you're going to be in that position to choose faith or to choose fear it's going to be a very tough time that's why you see many people in church they just come for a for a fluffed up word and they just get all goose pimples but then when they go out into the world they have no substance in their life they have no ability to be able to endure so this is why Jesus spoke to Paul right here in Acts 18, right when he got into Corinth. He said, don't be afraid, but speak and do not be silent for I'm with you and no one will attack you to hurt you for I have many people in this city. So he stayed there a year and six months, but when he was there, he went through hell. There were some things that happened. So then when we go over here to 1 Corinthians 2, of which we know he's talking about what happened to him at Corinth? Listen to what he says. He says, when I was in Corinth with you, in 1 Corinthians 2, 3, he said, I was with you in much weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Do you see that? Jesus specifically spoke to him in Acts 18, about verses 8 and 9, and he said, listen, don't fear because I'm with you. Then Paul later on, when he's writing a letter to the church, he said, hey, when I was there, I was full of fear. It would be hard for us to understand that, that a man of God would put these kind of things in writing so the church knew his heart. Because he understood all of us go through our own battles. Every single one of us fight the battles that we need to fight, especially in the times that we're living in. Especially in the times we're living in. There is only one way to totally become an overcomer, and that's to walk totally in the Spirit. That's the only way now that you will be an overcomer. Because with the things that are happening in the world, listen, please do not forget the things that we've taught the last 20 years. People tend to be so fleshly or carnal minded, they forget what God told them to do. Now when God delivered the people out of Egypt, he called Moses up on the mountain for 40 days, and by the time he was up there, the people who had just been delivered and spoken to by God took their jewelry off, melted it down, made a golden calf, an idol, an image, and they worshiped it. That's the same thing that people do today. The things that are happening in the earth today are the things that we have been preaching for the last 20 years, especially the last five. When all these things happened with the blood moons and everything happened with the Shemitah and everybody thought, oh, everything was just...
just going to be so peachy. And this was the year of Jubilee. And we're coming out of this and we're entering into a new season. I am telling you, we are on the verge of something so major happening in the world. It is unreal. We got Iran over there testing nuclear bombs, sending out these warhead missiles. We got uh, Iran, Northern Korea. I mean, these are happening right. There's been more testing of nuclear warheads or missiles now than in the last 20 years. Listen, why do you think they're testing them? Because they want to go play marbles? Or hopscotch? No, that's not why you're testing to see how far you, you can launch your nuclear warhead missiles. This is serious, folks. I'm telling you, regardless of what happens or what don't happen, we are living in a season unlike any other in the history of the world. Please don't forget everything that we taught. As people go, oh, well, he taught that before. Well, listen, you know what? Probably about eight out of every ten of the people who heard what I had preached before aren't here now. But they watch us on YouTube. They listen to us. They're calling me. They're asking, oh, what about this now? What about that? I said, listen, just because you left don't mean the things that God said was not going to happen. They're still going to happen. Whatever God destines to happen will happen. We have to be mindful to just say, okay. Look, he said, verse 6, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. However, we speak wisdom Okay, there's only certain things that we can share with certain people. He said, we speak wisdom among those, among those who are babies? No. Your Bible says that however we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. The spiritual men and women are those who can bear what is mature. Yet... Not the wisdom of this age or not a carnal wisdom. Nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God, listen, in a mystery. It's the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the angels for our glory, which none of the rulers of its, this age knew. For had they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Listen, if the devil and all his cohorts would have known really who Jesus was and what the ultimate plan of God was, they'd have never crucified Jesus. Why? Because that is the power of God unto salvation. That is the only way that, a, that an ungenerated, a fleshly or carnal man can be regenerated and be transformed. So it says here, eyes not seen, nor ear is heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Now, if we just know that verse and some people stop right there, you never know that there are people that know. It says, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor has even entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So does that mean we don't know? It's like the day of the Lord. There's people that believe that no one knows when Jesus is coming back. But the Bible teaches us that we know that we know the times and the seasons. Here he says, I has not seen or ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God prepared for those who love him. So does that mean the people that don't know God, that they don't, it, they've never seen it or heard it, or, or it hasn't even entered into the heart of man? Verse 10, but God has revealed them to who? To us. But God has revealed them to us, how? Through his spirit. That's the only way that we get the revelation of the mystery of God. Why? 
Because the carnal mind cannot accept the things of the kingdom. Only the spiritual man that has been born of the spirit that spends time in the word of God because the word is Jesus. And that anointing on that word gets into our mind, our soul, which is our mind, emotions, and our will. And it causes us to be transformed so we don't think the way the carnal man thinks. We don't act the way the carnal man acts. We walk in the kingdom of God. It's not a natural way of living. Hallelujah. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, listen to this, not the Spirit of the world. So there is a Spirit of the world. And we know that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the spirit of the world. So here we are, watch, we're men and women of God who have been reborn, we've been born again. Now the spirit of God indwells us, the Holy Spirit indwells us. And the, the creator of the universe, God himself, reveals the ways of the kingdom unto us who are born again. How? By his spirit. Because our minds now have been transformed. Oh, I love this stuff. I'm teaching you, you can live a total different life. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We don't want the spirit of the world. But the Spirit who is from God, the Holy Spirit, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not just in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing, listen, spiritual things with spiritual things. Now, this is where we live. This is the realm that we live in. We took the kids tubing last night up to Seven Springs, and I'm walking around, and I'm just listening how some of these people talk, how some of the carnal men and women talk. They're just all F this, F that, cursing this and that. They got their little kids around them, and I'm thinking, what are you doing? This is another aspect of our outreach. We have the Dairy Junior High School that our ministry purchased. And what we did is we put apartments, we refurbished apartments across the top of this building that we rent out to families. So this is another very large part of our ministry. choose right or wrong. There are sons of God 
And then there are sons of the devil. You're rather on one or the other. There's, a, there's only two ways to choose. And once those people have that free will to decide, at some time there is a line drawn in the sand. Because, I mean, the things amaze me when I see these, pick, these people picketing now and boycotting and doing these things. They said, one of the greatest pro-life movements marches just took place this past weekend. And there was more witches there, witches and warlocks that were fighting and protesting against the people that were, that were pro-life. And I thought, what would a bunch of witches be coming out for? And chanting and cursing and, and speaking evil things against born again Christians that are fight out fighting for the life of an unborn child. What does witches have to do with that? It is demonic. It is demonic. That's the answer. It's not spiritual. It's carnal. It's evil. It's fleshly. What would they come out in masses for to boycott and to picket and to fight against women who are out there fighting that are pro-life or fighting for the life of that unborn child? It just, it just baffles me. So what? He said, verse 14. This is one of my great favorite Bible verses, and I get a lot of favorite Bible verses if you ain't noticed that. But 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, listen, but the natural man does not receive or comprehend the things of the kingdom or of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor neither can he know them because they are, what? Spiritually discerned. They're spiritually dead. So that carnal mind, that carnal man could not accept the things of the kingdom. Why? Because he is spiritually dead. They just cannot understand them. The only way that it happens is if the spirit of the living God quickens them and convicts them and they receive that. The Spirit of God is likened unto a dove. And it's like every time you grieve that dove and every time you hurt that dove, if a dove comes like within five yards of you and you offend that dove or you hurt that dove, he'll never come within that five yards again. They have that capability and that safety to not let people get that close to them. Then if they come like 10 yards to you and you harm them or wound them or hurt them, they'll never come back within that 10 yards again. It's a defense mechanism. And that's the way the Spirit of God is. He comes and He convicts and He, he shows you what's right and what's wrong. And then, and then, okay, then they push Him away and they rebel against Him. Then the next time, He don't get that close to them again. But He still gives them another opportunity. He shares with them another opportunity. But sooner or later, according to a man and women, they choose their lifestyle. They choose their destination. That's why the problem's not God's. The problem's theirs. Because the spiritual man does not receive the, kings of the, the things of the Spirit of God or the kingdom of God for they're foolish unto him. Nor can he know them because they're what? Spiritually discerned or spiritually dead. But he, in verse 15, who, who is spiritual, he judges all, he judges all things. Yet, let, yet he himself is rightly judged by who? By no one. Now there are people in the church that say, look, you're not to judge anybody. That's a terrible misconception, my friend. We are to judge within the kingdom of God. We're to be able to judge matters within ourselves. We're to be mature men and women of God. We're to be able to make the right decisions Regardless of what we feel in our flesh, we're to do what God wants us to do. That's supposed to be our life. No, it's manifested out into people. You'll see it manifest out into the earth. You'll see really what's in people's hearts. 
There's people who say, oh, I'm just, God told me to do this, or I'm just waiting on the Lord for this, or God told me to do that. Chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, listen to this, could not speak to you as spiritual people. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people. But as to what? Carnal or fleshly. As to babes in Christ. Now listen. What that's showing us is, is there are people that are in Christ. Listen, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 says they're still in Christ. But they're fleshly. They're carnal. They're babies. They're immature. They're not spiritually minded. They don't know how to control their flesh. Doesn't mean that they're not saved if they have really accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But we who are spiritual are to be able to rightly judge according to the Word of God. And then that way we can protect ourselves. Because listen, if you're out there and a little kid has a, a loaded shotgun and he's walking around and the, he's just pointing it at everybody and you stand there and let him pull the trigger, it's going to be your own fault if he shoots you. You have to be spiritual enough and there got to be enough wisdom within your spiritual man that you go, okay, um, they're a heroin addict, so when they ask me for $50 and I give it to them and 50 and I give it to them and 50 and I give it to them and 50 and, and I'm supporting their habit, that sooner or later i got to know that I'm held accountable before God because I'm the one supporting their habit. It's just common sense. But no, we've been so, Amos 520, we've been so contorted and so spun around that we're a country that calls evil good and good evil. We don't even know anymore what's right from wrong. We don't know what's up and what's down. At least, you know, a lot of people obviously don't out there in the world right now. But Paul was addressing this to a church. He said, brethren, brethren, these were brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, fleshly, as the babes in Christ. Now, I fed you with milk. He knew what he was giving them. I could only give you milk and not solid food. For until now, you were not even able to what? To receive it. There's some teaching that you give to people that they cannot even receive it. It's like trying to give a T-bone steak to a baby. Their spiritual man or woman cannot even receive or accept the things of God. Why? Because they're carnal. They're fleshly. They want to hang on to their fleshly ways. So then when you tell them what's right or what's wrong or you try to give them correction, nowadays what they do is they just go down the road to someone who appeases their flesh. Instead of sticking it out and finding what's true in the kingdom of God. Even now, you're still not able, verse 3, for you are still carnal. Now, how did he know that they were carnal? For where there are envy and strife, where there is envy and strife, and divisions, because it causes divisions. Are you not merely carnal and behaving like mere men? Just like fleshly men, just like men out in the world? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Listen, think about this today. Let's make this today in the body of Christ. Think about how many people go, well, I'm Baptist, or well, I'm Methodist, or well, I'm Pentecostal, or oh, no, I just, 
This is, and then this is, and it seems like they're always trying to cause divisions. Now, I guess when you get to the truth of the word, that's how you find out who is approved by God or not. Because we're living in a time unlike any other time. I mean, I've had people get mad at me. People left even our own, even our own church because we talk about homosexuality in Leviticus or, you know, just sodomy and things that happen in, in, in Sodom. And they get mad at me because I just preach the Bible. Verse 5, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but they're but ministers through whom you've believed. As the Lord gave to each one, I planted and Apollos watered, but listen, only God can give the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters is anything, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will, re will receive his own reward according to what? His own labor. Now from here until chapter 4, it talks about the judgment seat of Christ where believers go into judgment and how we're judged. It's, it's phenomenal teaching, but I don't have enough time to get there. But let's just turn over to 2 Corinthians 5.13. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 5.13. Well, let's go to verse 1. I just have to read this for you tonight, then I'm going to close. He said, First Corinthians what you view right here is our parsonage. We've rented out this parsonage to families for 15 years. And then right to the right of the parsonage, you will be able to view our church. But as I said, all these are parts of our ministry. We're a multifaceted ministry. And I really want to share that with you being the senior pastor of Alpha Lions Den Ministry. So you know really what our ministry represents. Can you understand that? Can you wrap your mind around that? Can you wrap your soul around that, your spiritual man? Look, we don't look at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are only temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. So when we can set our mind on the things of the kingdom, when we set our mind on the things of the eternal, we have a total different perspective than someone who looks at things with a carnal mind, with a carnal eye. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, what's our, our earthly house? You think where you live in your physical address. Listen, he's not talking about Derry or Latrobe or Greensburg. He says, for we know that, that if our earthly house, this tent, is being destroyed, we have a building from God. Listen, you have a building from God. A house that's not made with hands. It's eternal in the heavens. 
For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed we have been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that this mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God himself, who also has given us, what? The spirit of a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home, where? Not in our physical house. When we're home, where? In the body. He's talking about us like we are a being, we are a person that lives in this house. This house is our body. This is where the true you really lives. We are absent from the Lord because we're living in our bodies. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 13. For if we, 2 Corinthians 5, 13. For if we are beside ourselves, it's like if we're out of our mind. For if we're beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. This, these chapters in 1 Corinthians 1 through 5 are showing us that we are a dual person. I say we're a tri-fold being. We're a spiritual person that has a soul, which is our mind, emotions, and our will. And we live in a tent. We live in this place called our body. Until we graduate, until we reach our final destination, our eternal home, where this corruption shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. We shall make it to our final destination. So what we need to be able to do is when we're in these battles and we're in these struggles, that is where we really have to always put the word of God first. And we have to be able to live in our spirit and not in our flesh. Because we are, we are a trifold being. There are two beings right there where the flesh battles against the spirit and the spirit battles against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another. It's one of the greatest mysteries in the kingdom of God. That he has put a spiritual man or woman, if you're a man, it's a man, if you're a woman, it's a woman, a spirit within you that lives within you, but it actually has different desires than your flesh itself. And until we really learn how to live in the spirit, we, we will never know how to not fulfill the lust of the flesh or the deeds of the flesh because they're contrary one to the other. You can live an abundant life while you're on this earth right now as long as you know how to submit to Christ and live your life according to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, let's bow our heads as we close in prayer. Father God, once again, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this word, this truth. God, we ask that you would write this word upon our hearts that we would not sin against thee. In these times, Lord, of great, great trials and tribulations on this earth, I ask that you would give us that peace of God which surpasses all understanding and that you would guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar, and right now I've been pastoring a church in Derry, Pennsylvania for approximately 16 years. I have known Jesus as my Lord and Savior for 41 years. And during this time, God has given me a burden for the body of Christ. Three specific things is spiritually, physically, and financially. I'm gonna share with you a story that is so powerful and life-changing regarding some of the things that have happened in my life in the last two years. About two years ago, I was having a problem with my vision. I didn't tell anybody, but I was going through this difficulty of seeing and just struggling with this. And I've watched so many people struggle in the church with different things physically. And I understand this, if you're going through a physical problem, it's gonna affect you spiritually. So I have a burden, I have a burden for the body of Christ. So today's show is gonna be able to help you help others physically, which will also help them spiritually. So I, I have this burden to get back to, my, back to my story. And I'm struggling with this as, as so many other people struggle. And I look at people in the body of Christ who struggle with being overweight who struggle with diabetes, who struggle with macular degeneration, who struggle with arthritis, which gets into our back and our hips and our knees, and all these issues that I watch people in the body of Christ struggle with. And here I was, a former NFL football player, pastoring a church. Now everybody would have thought that I had my life all together. But as I said, two years ago, two years ago, almost to the day, I began to lose my sight. And I went through this struggle of really trusting God. As I, as I was, my vision was declining, I knew that God spoke to me one day and he said that I will send you an answer. And sometime that's all you have and that's all you need is a word from God. And God has transformed my life. Today you're gonna hear of a story that is mind-boggling how God can bring healing into your physical body through natural, holistic products. God has really blessed a man by the name of Noel Turner from New Zealand with these products, and I heard about them. And that's what you're gonna hear on, on this show. It's a, it's a all natural way to bring health and restoration to your physical body. So I was in our church. I struggled with this for about six months by myself. I didn't tell anybody. And I was in the bottom of our basement helping my wife, Deborah with the food ministry. And I thought I had something in my left eye. And when I closed my left eye and I looked out of my right eye, I was blind. I couldn't see anything. And it really scared me. So they rushed me to, the, to an eye specialist. And then that eye specialist said that they had to take me to an optometrist. Now he looked at me and he told me that I had this thing happen in my eye, which is an occlusion. Now an occlusion is totally different from macular degeneration because an occlusion is like a stroke inside your eyeball. So all my veins had ruptured. There was a, a, an explosion inside my eye. And thank God that it did not go out the back of my eye because it probably would have killed me from a brain aneurysm but my eye was strong enough to hold the fluid. But what it did is it pushed the pupil out the front of my eye, causing me to go blind, not to see. So the only thing that I found out is I had to, I had to see a doctor, and the doctor told me the only way to, to, to be able to treat this is I had to get a shot in my eye once a month for 16 months. I had to go in once a month and get a shot in my eye. And, and the whole time, I just prayed about an answer. I said, God, you said that you were going to send me an answer. And just like many of you today, you struggle physically, and that affects you spiritually. So if you're struggling with overweight, being diabetic or diabetes, macular degeneration, or if you have arthritic issues, bad back, hips, knees, anything like that, inflammation is the number one cause to all these issues. So we have the answer today. And I want to bring you some good news. That listen, you need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when you, when you need change, when you want change, when you're sick and tired of that, God will send you the answer. 
So call some friends, tell them to tune in. It's going to be a great show. Hi, I'm Pastor Ronald Kozar, and you just got done watching a video that we had put together about a year ago now. And this is just a brief summary and a testimony. I could not wait to come back and share this with you to prove the product of Freezor. Because let's face it, the people that don't try it, they do not believe that it works. But me, firsthand experience, I know this, a person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person who has an argument. So what you just heard on that brief little testimony clip was my beginning stages of experimenting with the Freezor product. And now today, when we're making this video for you, is over one year later. Now, if we go back a year ago, when, when you just saw the video that we put together, I was going blind in this eye, and I just began to receive my sight. My knees were coming back. Everybody thought, well, that could be working, and it could not be working. Well, now it's been over a year. I just went to my eye doctor, and they tested my eyes again. My vision is actually 2016. There is no fluid in my eye whatsoever. My eye has healed back 100%. Now, previous to my, to my beginnings with the Freezor product, my eye was filling up with blood. I was hemorrhaging with inside my eyeball. And I actually have the scans of every single month for 16 long months. I had received a shot in my eye. And I started to take the Freezor product and, and honestly, I am telling you, it healed my eyes up. It's been over one year now, and I have 2016 vision, perfect vision, no more shots. Thank you, Jesus. My knees, my right knee was absolutely shot. I had no cartilage in my leg whatsoever. My left leg was going. Here we are one year later, taking a Freezor product. I take two Omegas every morning and two every night, two a stacks of thin every morning and two at night, and I also take the weight loss shakes. So listen, if you're having problem with your knees or any type of arthritis, one year later, I ride the bike now three days a week, five miles every single time. I go in and work out for my legs twice a week, and uh, things are absolutely incredible. So if you're struggling with weight loss, that's number one, I take the, the weight loss protein, uh, shakes that Freezor has. I actually started out taking the children's shake. So they have two of those um, shakes. One is chocolate, one is vanilla. You can switch them back and forth. That's what I started to lose weight. Now, I lost 45 pounds, 45 pounds by taking the, the weight loss, just the shakes. And then off of the other two products that I said, the Omega-3 and the Astaxanthin, I've got my eyesight back, so it helps you with weight loss. If you're diabetic, we've helped so many people that, are, that have diabetes or struggling that are diabetics. I really encourage you to try it. The next thing is, is those that struggle with arthritis, neck, back, or knee pain. I am telling you, it will fight. The, it's an anti-inflammatory. I believe it's one of the best in the world. It has absolutely changed my life. So we have a 90 day, a three month money back guarantee. And if you call in, you'll see an information page at the, at the end of this, <laughs> and you can dial the 800 number. That is 1-888-962-4888. Tell them Pastor Ron sent you. You'll buy a bottle and get a bottle free. Then you got a 90 day money back guarantee. If the product does not work for you, and you are unsatisfied with the product, ship it back in and get your money back. But I am telling you folks, it worked for me. I lost 45 pounds, I got my eyesight back, my legs, my knees are doing fine, my back, I saw a chiropractor for arthritis in my back for 14 years, and I have not seen a chiropractor for my back or anything else in the past year since I started taking the Freezor products. So I'm telling you, it worked for me, and I know it'll work for you. And what do you have to lose? It's a money-back guarantee. So please give it, a, give it a shot. You could go to my website. You'll also see that 
on our information page, which we'll be following after this video. But my website is team, T-E-A-M, Freezor, F-R-E-Z-Z-O-R.com, forward slash Pastor Ron. Go to the website, check out the products, listen to the doctors on there, listen to the testimonies. It's a phenomenal website. Then dial the 800 number. It's 888-962-4888. Tell them Pastor Ron sent you. Buy a bottle, buy your first bottle, they'll give you a bottle free. You can't beat that. So it, it's a great way to get started. And listen, I'm, I'm here just to help you because I know that pain. I know how bad that hurts. So I, I want the best for you. Just try it and I hope it'll help you. So God bless you. And I'll be talking to you again. I pray that you'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Till next time, see ya.